What's up, everybody? Just wanted to bring a short video about uh, headless WordPress authentication and Astro. One of the most frequent questions I get asked when people start talking about headless WordPress is, well, what about authentication? Like WordPress has lots of things that you need to be authenticated for, uh, such, such as seeing previews or draft posts. Um, so it's a pretty common question that we get. And I figured I could give a quick demo today of how to implement uh, some level of authentication with headless WordPress using uh, WP GraphQL and an extension called WP GraphQL JSON Web Tokens, JWT. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing today. So I got us some resources set up over here in my basic Astro starter, and I added a couple of things. Uh, the first was just a basic auth page um, that gives us an additional route on our Astro uh, project to host our authenticated stuff, right? And then from there, I actually created an auth form component, which is not an Astro component, and it is a view component. So the authentication I'm gonna be demonstrating today is gonna to be all client side, but let's take a look at that. We can see here that I'm passing in this uh, uh, process.env value from our environment variable so that we can use that in our component. Then we'll open up this auth form thing and we can see that, hey, we've just got a couple of different things here, username, password, uh, submit button. Uh, and when on submit, we are going to uh, call the login and fetch method on this view component. Then right below that, we've got a section to render our draft posts, if we had any. Um, we can see here our data model for our component is just username, password, so we're tracking those things with fee model. Uh, then we've got a space for our JSON web token once we have it, and an empty array for our posts. Uh, as I, we saw in the previous step, yep, we're taking in a prop that is a string, and it is required since we need that URL to do anything. Um, so let's take a look at login and fetch and see what happens, right? So first thing we're going to do is prevent the default uh, just because we're submitting that form. We're not using any sort of fancy form magic here. Um, basic old JavaScript spa stuff. Um, and so I'll go ahead and fill out our form right now. We can see that what we're doing is, you know, we're just going to console log, logging in user. Then we're going to perform a fetch request uh, to our GraphQL endpoint. And that's going to be post and we're passing in this body, right? So we've got a query property, it's this, this long string here. Um, so we're gonna perform a mutation, right? Log in the user, uh, perform this login mutation. We've got some input here. This client mutation ID is gonna be unique ID and then we're passing the username and password. And then here's what we're getting back, uh, an object that's structured this way, right? We're gonna get back auth token uh, and some optionally some information about the user. So if I go ahead and click log in, it should fire this request and then fire the one after that and we'll look at that once that comes back. So we see logging in user, okay, cool. And then our, our response from WP GraphQL, and we get that auth token. Um, and then we get some information about the user, their, their GraphQL ID and then their name, right? And that could be uh, any, any other user data we want, user meta. Um, so that gets us up to here, right? So if we get a successful response back uh, that contains an auth token, uh, then we're gonna go actually fetch the auth content, right? Which, which we see happen right here. So we're gonna just extract uh, our auth token out into our view component uh, as a property of the, the view component. And then we're gonna fire off another GraphQL request, right? So we're gonna perform fetch with this.url, uh, still post in here, but you can see we've added one additional header, right? We've added this HTTP authorization header uh, using this bear uh, method, right? So bear space, then this, we're gonna interpolate our, our JSON web token right here. And then we're going to fire off this uh, post that this query that needs authentication to succeed. And if it all comes back, then we're gonna add that again to our, our view component and let that render out for us right there. Um, and so this is really helpful because there are lots of instances where uh, people in WordPress need authenticated data. And I'll give you an example right here of how just how GraphQL works with authentication to make sure that it's doing the same capability checks that it would for any of your, your regular WordPress stuff, right? So it's a draft or um, a preview is not a public entity. And so here in the graphical ID, if I request it as a public persona, you can see I don't get anything back. I don't get any data back, right? There's no drafts that are available to me because the system doesn't know who I am. I'm not authenticated. I don't have capabilities to view drafts. Um, but if I switch this to apply, basically the capabilities that I have is the user logged into my uh, WordPress backend and rerun that, you can see that I get those same uh, things that I did over here on my decoupled site. 
Uh, so again, just a really quick introduction to uh, this WP GraphQL JWT auth module. Um, really easy to set up, just had to define really this one constant um, in my WP config file, or I assume you could do that in another plugin as well. So again, thanks for watching, uh, appreciate it.